Hello, everybody. Th thank you for checking out my interview with Mr. Henry Doss. Oh, yeah. And um, we have something to tell you that is a brand new breaking news story that I want to make sure I put in this video. So I'm going to let Mr. Doss himself tell you what's going on. Well, I appreciate it. Shout out to all of you because our book, Orgasm, The Secrets of Men, is number one on Amazon as far as relationship books go. So uh, America has spoken, our women have spoken, our men have spoken that this book is amazing. So if you haven't gotten the book yet, go ahead and get the book. Amazon, iBooks, Orgasm. I appreciate the love that you guys have shown us. Thank you for the interview. I appreciate it, man. That's right. Well, enjoy this interview. I had a great time doing it. Was it fun for you to do the it interview? It was. It was a good interview. Okay, yeah, and it's yeah, not yeah. just a book. It's other things too. So check Absolutely. it out. So when it's all said and done, comment below, subscribe to his channel, my channel, everything else, and we'll check you guys out. Thank you. Hello everybody, how you doing? My name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. This is The Conservative Take and today we have a extra special guest to us. We have a person by the name of Mr. Henry Doss. I'm going to bring him on here and but before I do, I want you to let you know, this is your first time here on the channel. Please consider liking and subscribing and sharing with your friends. We do interviews on this channel all the time. And this is the first one that I've done with someone who is of an expert in relationships. I talk about a lot on this channel about the black family, the family in general, the breakdown of the family. With this gentleman, I know personally, he's a dear friend of mine. He and his wife are fabulous. He's an author. He's amazing. Let's bring him on. I'll shut up right now. Henry, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for uh, taking the time to chat with me. Thanks for having me on the show. And, and all that, but I'm doing very, very well, man. Happy to be here. Happy to talk about uh, the book. Happy to talk about relationships. Happy to talk about whatever you want to talk about. So let's let's have a good time. Yeah, uh, I really appreciate that. And um, I know you're a really busy man. So first of all, I just wanted to say, let's just lay out the uh, how I know you. How do I know you? And how do we get my wife and your wife get together? And let's kind of lay that groundwork first. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been a while now. I think... Uh, I think our wives met at maybe uh, like some mommy kids play date type of stuff and all that stuff. And uh, I think they hit it off. And then uh, after that, of course, we do we do sessions. We we do sessions uh, as far as faith based stuff. We, we meet at the house and we chat and we talk and all that. And I think that's my first time actually meeting you. And we we hit it off. As, as well so that was a good thing you know win-win for for all of us and i think since then now we just keep in contact we talk we chat obviously covid has kind of slowed everything down as far as just getting out and all that but uh it's been a while now and uh that's kind of how the genesis of all this stuff actually started for us so yeah yeah and, and i i want to say this i don't want to bring up this name and talk about this person because i don't know much about this person but uh, it's a gentleman by the name of Kevin Samuels. I believe his name is. He's very popular mm -hmm. out there. But uh, I don't know anything about him. I know he does relationship stuff. But I know right now that what you have to offer, I, I can't speak for him, is excellent. And I see yourself coming up to a level of where he is now. I'm not endorsing him, whatever, but I just know he's very popular. And yeah. the ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, I, I will be remiss if I didn't say this, that, that if you haven't heard Mr. Uh, Henry speak, he is passionate. He is uh, a, a wonderful minister, a pastor. He has a heart of God, and he's an excellent author. He has a book. Don't talk about your, new, your latest book that you just came out with. You have, you have two books, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, and I thank you. Thank you for those kind of words. I appreciate it. Uh, the latest book, uh, I don't know if your artists can see it, but the latest book is called Orgas Him. Uh, it's The Secrets of Men, and it is on iBooks. It's on Amazon. It's on our website as well, myrelationshipthing.com. You can get the book from there as well. But uh, that is our most uh, aggressive project to date. Uh, it's been very, very well for us. Um, it exposes all the secrets of men. Every woman on the planet, aunts, sisters, cousins, should have this book because this book unpacks everything related to men. If you want to understand why he ghosts you, everything that you want to know about men and their secrets, their phones, their side chicks, everything is packed into that book, uh, which is why it's so popular uh, right now. And we're very, very thankful for that. Uh, and you can go on Amazon. You can you can get it. Like I said, all that stuff is there for you. And uh, yep, you're right. I've been speaking and teaching and sharing this stuff for uh, over a decade uh, now. So it's been really good for us. Yeah. Well, I read the book. Thank you. And he and he's not kidding. I mean, this I will put it out there. There's a warning at the beginning of the chapter saying, hey, you know, this is not to you know tear people down. It's to give information so people can actually grow and, and blossom. 
And sex is something that God created. And so it's nothing that's that's evil, but in the wrong way is used can be evil. Anything can be used evilly. A cast iron skillet can be used evilly. So um, <laughs> so just just to let you know that it's a fantastic book. And I want to talk about one section of it dealing with uh, the Internet side of it, the passwords and security. But let's, oh, yeah. Skip, yeah. let's skip that a little bit later because I want to talk about that a little bit later. But okay. um, can you let the audience know a little bit about yourself, your story, your history, um, anything you want to share in terms of, um, you know, your relationship with your wife or God or uh, or how you came up to this idea to have this book and have this ministry? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so started years, years back, man, even before I met my wife, uh, I've been doing this because of my past relationship, my past failures and all the things that I did wrong as a man and learning and, and that breakdown, that dynamic of, of growing through those those pains of relationships uh, is where I started years and years ago before I even met my wife. Obviously, we got into the I uh, got into the church and started doing some work with the church as far as ministering to the people and uh, coaching, relationship counseling, all that stuff. That's back in uh, Alabama, where uh, I'm from, Roll Tide. Don't don't hurt me. Uh, <laughs> but that is where I'm from. We started that way back back then in Alabama, and from there we do home services, home counseling, home reachings and teachings, and all that stuff. We go out into the streets, meet people, shake hands, kiss babies, all that stuff. That was building the groundwork for what we have become. Uh, and here we're in North Carolina now. This is kind of where this thing has really flourished for us. Obviously, with the popularity of social media, TikTok, uh, and all that stuff, I had some viral videos to go out uh, that uh, really kind of raised awareness and really kind of challenged the thought of people as far as relationships. Because we believe, we believe that we are predefining love, that God has already defined how marriage should be, how relationships should be, what a man is, what a woman is, but we're now placed in a world that is trying to redefine what a man is, redefine what a woman is, redefine what marriage and relationships uh, are. And so there's the clashing that we have now, and this is why we have a space to actually talk about this stuff and bring all of this stuff to the forefront and talk about it uh, in the book. And I think that's what makes it so powerful. That's what makes it so controversial and all that stuff. But that's that's the groundwork that laid all of this stuff for us as we uh, as we continue to go with this stuff. So, Henry, I'm going to enjoy this conversation right here because you hit some things that just got me goose goosebumps, baby. I'm like, <laughs> first of all, I got to say. Uh, props out to your Alabama Tide for destroying my cane yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely destroying the cane yesterday. I'm sorry. Um, hey, 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 hey. I'm glad they scored some points. I was, they scored points, hey. I figured yeah. <laughs> that's, I, was, I was expecting a shutout. So, but but no, back to back to this though. Um, mm-hmm. I, we, I The last interview I gave was with a person by the name of um, Kali Eitz. And she, in the introduction, we've got videos out there. The interview, if you've seen it, it's the last one we've done. She came up there and she said she's a teacher and she's in she's from California from Compton, no less, but she lives on the on the East Coast now that she moved to Florida, I believe. And she said in the introduction, she said this based on what you just said here, um, Henry. She said that boys don't even know what being a boy is anymore. They don't know what manhood is anymore. And right. and it, it's that's the crux of it, dude. And see, no one's talking about marriages, right? No people talking about, right. you know, daddy's not being there. Well, part of the reason right. why daddy's not there is because they got divorced. You know, right. and so right. that's why I think this is so important. And I'm going to marry it together because right now we're at a time right now when we can't have the veil between Christianity and and uh, and pop culture or society. Because right now your political views, you're basically a religious a right person if you believe in marriage. You are right. an extremist if you believe in marriage. <laughs> so right. so now that that line's blurred now. So right. regardless of what you call yourself, liberal, conservative, whatever, if you believe in certain things, you are automatically put in a category of that. So. That's why I'm glad to have you here, Henry, because that Thank is something that I will not talk about uh, extensively. So to, to my next question, it's hard for going on that long thing there. No, sorry. Um, is this question here. So uh, what is your, from your experience, from your research, from your walking the streets, talking, kissing babies, as you mentioned, yeah. what is the number one thing you see as the issue when it comes to marriages and breaking down, particularly with the black culture, if there's any difference whatsoever? Oh, uh, well, uh, that question is packed. That's a powerful question. Uh, but number one, man, we, we have to get we have to get fathers back in the home. Like it is there's no other way around it. We have to get 
uh, the male figure, not just in the home, but in the public square as well, too, because uh, everything branches around that. Uh, time uh, did a time did a story. I want to say, don't quote me, 74, 75, Time did a, a, a cover story talking about dads. And it said, it said, dad is destiny, right? And he said, all of the world's issues, about 95% of them, can be attributed to a father not being there in the home, whether that's that whether that's premature, you know, babies, girls with babies, or 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 guys with guns. All of it can be triggered back to oh not my. having a, a strong male figure in the home. Wow! I think that's going to be highly important, especially in the black community. Uh, another thing that I've seen is is that we have to turn the television off. You know, pick a day, pick a day that you just turn the television and the radio off and just not receive that news, not receive that information that's coming to you because we automatically think that that stuff is true. Uh, but all the news that is coming, they, they want to be fast, they want to be quick, but they don't want to be accurate. And that's the issue that's hurting uh, relationships, people's mindset. Now it's, it's hard because people think, uh, our women are thinking that, you know, I can't get a man because these men are not going to do right and, and all that stuff. And and our women are, are losing a desire to have a man and our men are losing the desire to have a woman. So that's where you go into the roles being broken down, roles destruction and all that stuff. Uh, now, you spoke a little bit about uh, like Kevin Samuel. Kevin Samuels is more of a uh, or high value uh, type teacher. Right. He, he says that, you know, you want a high value man, a high paying and all of these things. Okay. I don't subscribe to that. Uh, necessarily. Uh, that's okay. part of that whole narrative that has come to us. I think that value comes from two people really sacrificing to be together, wanting to be together and believing in the relationship, believing in the marriage, believing that, hey, if we have children, we're going to raise these children together, that whole thing. But that sounds antiquated, antediluvian even in this this day, right? Because people don't want to talk about being together and committed to together and you know, not having secrets, you know, sharing a bank account, all, all of that stuff, right? I, I talk to people about it. They act like you, they've seen an alien, you know, like, what is it, where's this guy come from? So, uh, but yeah. if I had to pick things, I, I would say those couple of things are, are probably the biggest that hurt relationships. Uh, obviously, you know, poor communication is, is always going to be at the top of the list, but that comes from not having a father. That comes from the information that we get from media and all that stuff. So good question, though. Well, that's a, that's a, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so that Time Magazine article, we're going to have a link to this um, put there if we can find it. And um, that's that's incredible. Ninety five percent. And um, it's interesting because when um, President Obama, when he had his first major rela race relations speech, he talked about this is back in 2018. No, yeah. 2000, 2000. I'm sorry. He got elected in 12. So it was 2012, somewhere in there. Right. And um, no, sorry. Eight. I'm sorry. Eight. He got reelected in 12. <laughs> All right. So this is on time impromptu here. But yeah, 2008, we did a video on this as well. We talked about it, highlighted one of his speeches he gave talking about the black community, talking about black fatherlessness and how there needs to be more responsibility. Now, from there, he didn't kind of live up to what that whole thing, but his speech was nails on. And, and it was awesome because it was actually trying to become president at the time, I believe. And so um, I think you're 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 right on point there. Um and with the Kevin Samuels thing, I appreciate that because I didn't know he, I didn't know what he felt, whatever, but I just felt in terms of his stature, I think you will be a name that will be recognized like him um, in the, in the in that, not the distant future. Because no, I know you personally, um, Henry, I, I've seen you uh, give a sermon. I've seen you, your heart. We, we, we've hung out. We've had lunch with together. And I just know you just, you're a dynamic person. Your wife, by the way, I'm sorry to say to you, she is the backbone of your ministry. She is amazing. She does all this. Uh, I, 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 you can speak for yourself, but um, well, let me let me let me have you tell you. Tell me how your wife Victoria plays into your ministry, into your into your uh, into your business. Well, she, you no, you're right. I'm, I'm giving you a hard time, but she, uh, <laughs> but you you are right. She I know is, already. Uh, she she is the core man, and that's uh, I think that is the backbone of successful relationships. Uh, she's a. Uh, uh, she's a stay-at-home uh, mom, so she takes care of our babies. She does that for us, and she runs our business uh, as well. She she does that stuff, all of the, the the nicks and nannies of graphics and design and building all that stuff. She's self-taught in, in Photoshop, uh, editing, all the stuff that that uh, the business needs to run. She's, she does that, uh, so she's really good at that. And uh, 
being that she is my wife, she's she's the person that I comfort in, I resign in, and all that stuff. And she is a good woman, you know, and that makes a that makes a huge difference. I won't let her work for somebody else on the outside. You know, I just I will not allow it because what we have in our family and our structure is too important for her to be working for whatever Amazon or you know Microsoft or whatever. They 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 have enough people to do that. We need to build our our stage for us and for our family that is is coming too. And that's another big thing that gets me in trouble when I talk about that. It's like what you know and all that, but that's part of it. So she is crucial to the success that we've had and the success that we will have too. So she's second to that. Hey, conservative take family. I told you this guy's the real deal, man. He's on point, man. And he, what he what he's saying here is not fake. I know, I know the brother. I know him. I've seen him. I've seen him uh, behind closed doors. He's he's what he says he is, man. I, I love you, brother, for Appreciate everything you're doing. You. Um, your kids are family. Uh, it's awesome. It's amazing to see. I, I'm I'm excited to see what gonna happen in the future. Um, you mentioned Ooh. about and, and this good segue into this talking about um, marriage and sharing. You mentioned about sharing a bank account now. I'm sure people on my channel are familiar with a person by the name of um, Gordon. I'm sorry, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> hungry. I'm, I'm kind of hungry. No, um, Dave Ramsey. He Dave, has a yeah. Financial Peace University. I'm a graduate of that. But one of the things he he talks about that is is not being sh um, bashful about sharing your financial information. He says people hide their credit score to their family and friends because they're ashamed of it, or whatever. But he said the more we share that stuff, especially with our spouse, the more healthy we can be financially. So. And sharing a bank account is something that's part of that. And part of his deal is, and it sounds like you as well, is bringing the family into one collective cohesion. Where right. Everyone's involved, and right. so like you know, the, the kids have their part. You know, the, the wife has her part, or whoever whoever's doing the job I mean, in front of the camera, back the, behind the camera. So right. everyone has a role, regardless of that. So can you speak to me about the importance to you? You kind of already talked about this. The importance of, uh, let me put this way. I frame it this way. How? Why is it important for a family to be that cohesive, given the society we live in today? Uh, well, uh, cohesiveness yields uh, great results, right? Two are better than one uh, as far as minds. But when you are in a singularity in the relationship, then everything is so much smoother. Um, because once you start having separate banks account, bank accounts, then secrets come. Secrets start to happen. So if I have if I have an addiction to whatever meth or, or porn, uh, for instance, and I, I'm shopping online for my porn, then my wife doesn't know about it, you know, and she doesn't get it and, unless something happens, right? Then she has to find out. There's trust issues, then all types of stuff that can go wrong with that, right? But if you are of the single thread, a single mindset, you see what's coming into the account, you see what's going out of the account. So when you go to make decisions, uh, because everybody wants to to be involved in the decisions. But everybody wants to have separate accounts. That it doesn't work that way. If you're going to be involved in the decisions, you need to know everything that's that's coming in and out of that uh, bank account, so you guys can share it. And if there is an issue, say you have an addiction, like I said, to porn or what have you, that stuff you can go to your wife about. This is the addiction that I have. How do we get through it? Or this is the brokenness that I have. Okay, well I have an an addiction to Amazon. I'm I'm getting Amazon packages every two days at the house. You know that type of thing. That's what my wife gets like Amazon packages every two days. Right? She's getting them and all that stuff. But I know what's coming in, what's coming out. Then I know how we need to adjust to as well. So hey, we we just spent over our budget maybe three hundred dollars this past uh, month. She knows. I know. We can see it. We have access to it. All that type of stuff. What's crazy is a lot of people don't know this, but what's crazy is a lot of times in relationships with people with uh, separate accounts, uh, if uh, one of those people die, you know, husband dies or something like that, then the wife then has to find out all of the stuff that was going on in that husband's account, if she can even get access to it. That is a very, very common thing that happens in uh, wow. marriages and, and stuff like that. Too. Wow. So that that's a dangerous game to play to try to separate the two. Be honest, be open. Wow. You're in a relationship, you're in a marriage, or rather, I would say if you're going to do that, join account, definitely be married. If you're in a relationship, then you have some leeway to play with. But if you're in a marriage, one account, one accord, let's go with it. So that's what I would say. It's dangerous not to. Wow. You know, it's, it's funny that we have um, a couple accounts that we um, don't have. She has eyes and ears to. And I didn't do that by design. It's just I was too lazy to call the bank and tell them to do it. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not I'm not opposed to it, but we share everything on our main account, though. So our main account, everything goes out, you know. But, um, yeah, that's actually a really good idea because sometimes she'll say, like, 
well, where's the money out of this account? I said, well, I spent it. That's it. I didn't tell you about it. You know, it's like even those. Then you, then you have to justify why you did it, and then that, and that causes friction. So I guess I got to be on the phone. To, I guess I got to be on the phone on Tuesday to fix that situation. So, um, but yeah, because Dave Ramsey said to do that, but I never really know exactly pragmatically why. And you know, it's something like you said with someone getting um, injured or a coma or right. dead. Then all of a right. sudden, that becomes a bigger problem. Wow! Right. Incredible. So um, I'm gonna go back to what you said about uh, about keeping the family cohesive. I, I, yeah. I kind of, to me, and what you said that you not gonna allow your wife to to be out there in in, in the world to, to to do things for other people. You want her resources uh, consolidated within your ministry, your business, for your right. own purposes. And I like that um, from a pragmatic standpoint, from a business standpoint. But also, can you speak to also from a spiritual standpoint? I mean, or from a just from I want to sound like I'm a tinfoil hat conspiracy guy, but there's a war on us. Right. And right. do you think that's important to have that kind of cohesiveness where everyone's together? where there's no joint accounts, there's communication and we're all huddling together and to uh, buffer us against what's out there that's trying, trying to destroy not only our family uh, spiritually, but also through a um, from a, a constitutional standpoint, you know, from a civil yeah. civil liberties, from a right standpoint. Right. Uh, it's 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 crucial um, to understand why that is. Now, you you spoke uh, firstly about uh, why you know I don't I don't allow my wife to work for somebody else on the outside because I'd hate to be you know uh, at the end of our road our journey and I'm sitting at the dinner table, she's at the table. And I say, you know what, honey, I made, you know, Target, you know, $50 billion over my career. I did that for Target. And she looks at me and she says, well, you know what, for Walmart, I made them $40 billion. Yes. And then we sip on our soup and we've been, we made nothing for ourselves, right? Right. That's not the design. The design is to build. She, my wife being able to be at home, be able to make her own schedule, being able to, to actually teach and train our kids, all of that stuff is, is so valuable to me, right? Um, it was uh, it was Malcolm X, I think, that said that, uh, why would you send your children to the enemy to be educated? Yeah. Uh, and whatnot. And I don't believe in all the philosophies that Malcolm X. No, I'm with there, you. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, makes you, it makes you think, right? Uh, my wife is highly important. She's too important to be giving all of her time and all of her energy to an outside source, right? Because our home and our structure is so important. She's learned over over the past eight years. She's learned and read so many. It's it's crazy the amount of uh, resources she's given us from her being able to do that. Um, I had a fight at work <laughs> with the with the young woman once because it was snow day. You know, we had first moved up here to North Carolina, and snow was everywhere. It's crazy. And one of the HR ladies that I had had a little beef with earlier. She's like, I hate being here. I hate I have to come here in the snow and all that stuff. I said, I know. That's why my wife uh, doesn't do that. You know what she does on a snow day? Whatever she wants to do on a snow day. You know, she wants to take a day off. She wants to take a vacation. She can do that. Uh, and that's by design. Uh, whatever our children need to learn, all as far as respect, as far as lessons, schooling, books, whatever, she's able to give all of those tools and resources to us. So it's, it's highly important. Uh, now you factor in what's going on with the the world today, the economy today. Uh, what's happening? Nobody knows, right? Now they're throwing COVID and and whatever a version of COVID or whatever, however you take on that is. They're throwing all that stuff out there. Who knows what's happening? Uh, and so it's going to be crucial that you and your wife are on one accord. But the design of the enemy is to separate you. That's that's why television. If there's the Real Housewives of Atlanta and Real Housewives of Texas or whatever, all that stuff is meant to break down the family. Because if the family is strong, then you have stronger neighborhoods. If the neighborhood is strong, you have stronger cities. Str cities are strong, the strong states, then a country that's full, fully strong. The enemy can't have that. So uh, that's why there's so much confusion and breakdown uh, to attack the actual family, God's design for family. That is why that is so. If you're just joining us on this channel, um, check out his book, Orgasm. It's on Amazon, Henry Doss. Uh, Victoria Doss, as well as uh, his partner. Um, it's a fantastic book. I read that. And uh, you mentioned Malcolm X. It's excellent. You know, um, yeah, he did. I, I had that quote, too, that I attributed to him as well, that uh, don't send your, why would you send your, you said it better than I would, but basically, you know, 
why would you send your family out? Yeah, and to, to someone who doesn't like them or who's their enemy. And right. so, yeah, and the way the society is going right now, we can actually see the separation there. You know, the fact you mentioned just the traditional values were really being looked at as being enemies of the state. It's really, it's really interesting how, you know, I'll, I'll go back a little, little bit where, you know, back in the 90s and 2000s, Christians kind of kept it to the side. You know, we saw our rights being diminished a little bit by a little bit, but not a big deal. It, it's not, it's not going to happen. It's no, who, who cares? Just one little thing. And yeah. now we're at a point now that it's like, you got to pick, you got to choose a side, you know? Right. And so I don't want to get into politics per se, but I almost have to get into this situation of stuff like critical race theory and the Black Lives Matter movement, where essentially the Black Lives Matter movement said, we want to tear down the nuclear family. Such the point, they got so much backlash on it, they went back and changed the website and, and got rid of it. However, right. I have screenshots from the original version of it, but um, they're just anti, they're um, antithetical to the Christian worldview of what this country was founded on. And I'm saying we're a Christian country per se, in terms of um, yeah. the founders. They were, some of them were deists, some of them were other things, but there was a definitely uh, uh, idea that we are a God driven country, that the rights come from God, and therefore we should tribute our lives going forward to, to that, um, that, um, that paradigm. Mm -hmm. And so I guess to me, uh, what's your take on stuff like, not particularly on the issue itself, but like Black Lives Matter, critical race theory, um, even should you even get the jab, you know, it's like, it's like you're, you're, you're being forced to put on one side of the, of the issue. And to your, to your point, do you think that having the family structure in place will not only be protected, but also be able to turn around the trend so that maybe this country can get back to its roots? Good question. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I would hope uh, that things would turn around, uh, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, that, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a big question too, because the, the design is to separate, right? The design is uh, whether it's classism, whether it's racism, socialism, you know, now, you know, the Biden bus is like, Hey, get this jab or we hate you. Uh, right. Those type of things. It's, it's ugly. Everything is meant to di divide your color, my color, your amount of money, my amount of money, where you work, where I work, where you hang out, where I, I, I don't. I know New York is, is is trying to do the whole thing. If you're not vaccinated, then you can't go here. It's everything is to divide. So the the relationship or the marriage being that it's supposed to be cohesive is, a, is, is something that stands alone and something that's glaring. Right. And then you factor in that uh, the fact that you're a Christian. Now, Christians look uh, looked at as the enemy. You are the enemy, right? And not to get too preachy and teachy and all that stuff, but uh, I think in the end time, which I think we're quickly moving towards, in the end time, that's how the Antichrist comes to power with with what he does is, you know, hey, these guys are the issue. It's those Christians because if you look at it, uh, uh, Biden, one of the first things he did was, was to re-sign this whole sexuality bill, put that back into place that Obama had put into office that, that he had done. It's all about sexuality, this particular type of sexuality, matter of fact. Uh, and a lot of times people don't tell you that that's the reason why a lot of people hated Trump, not because they think he's a racist. America's always been racist. So <laughs> you don't care about this guy being a racist or not. Yeah. It's his stance on sexuality that was the issue. Uh, a lot of people did not like that. And to come into it, and say that, hey, marriage is between one man and one woman, people have an issue with that. One man, one woman having sex with each other, that's an issue with that. Why can't we have sex with everybody all the time, whenever we want to? So that is the divide that is causing the great chaos. And at the core of it is Christians saying, hey, the morality says to be like this. And everybody in the world around us is saying, you know, oh, no, you guys have always been the issue. So we need to get rid of you. You are the problem. So that's why that stuff is so important as it relates to marriage. It's important that we stay unified in a world that wants to separate us. But at the same time, do we win that battle? Do we win that war? I, I don't know. You know, I hope I hope so. And that kind of changes the dynamic of everything. But uh, it's hard to say on that. Well, I try, I, try, I try my best to get you to answer that same question that way and without without forcing it to you. But you answered it exactly the way my heart is leading. So, oh, yeah. Um, that, yeah, because that's what that's kind of what I was trying to get around. It's hard for me to get there. And because, yeah, I mean, essentially that the, 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 the foundation of this of this of the society is based on the family. Right. Right. And so once you break that down, 
everything you just said falls into place. And so, um, so, okay, well, let's kind of get kind of a heavy topic there for everybody, but um, just let you know, this, <laughs> this, this brother is deep. Check out his book. I mentioned to you before. So let's get to some specifics about this book, actually, in terms of yeah. like, um, as the one thing I found very interesting, and by the way, I'm not going to give out any spoilers. You got to read it for yourself and you divulge whatever you want to divulge, Henry. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, but uh, I, I do want to talk about two things. One yeah. is that it's you almost at the end of each chapter or mid chapter, you give like exercises and questions. So yes. this isn't, this isn't like a preachy book, like, um, check, check his phone, 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 check his phone. You check his phone yet? Check his phone. <laughs> <laughs> but this can, <laughs> but there's con <laughs> but there's constructive things in here, right? It's like there's yeah. help. It's like you know, you know, it, it exercises, questions, things you can do, and then and you know, don't push issues. Hey, don't it, this is this is this is checkers. This is chess, not checkers, right? You don't got to get all the answers at once, right? That's so right. Um, that was that was pretty good. But so that's number one. Number two is that you mentioned and this is this dude. This is brilliant, man. I mean, I I, I absolutely love this part of it. the pathways for men. Can you, can you mind talking about that a little bit? Give a little spoiler. There's three of them: the bad one, the real bad one, but then the, the other two ones. Can you want to talk? You want to talk about that a little bit? About the pathways? The, yeah, the men, the men pathways. One's like, uh, oh he, yeah. He, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have to be explicit with the terminology, but if you want, just do it. I mean, I'm not saying I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Uh, yeah, but look at sure, sure a lot of people are going to grab the book after this. Well, I'm yeah, spoil it for, for anybody. Yeah, but yeah. I will say. I will say uh, that that men have varying thought processes uh, and women need to understand these processes that the way that men think, the way that men believe. And a lot of times that comes from and you, you'll see some of this in the book, too. A lot of times that comes from background, you know, what he got when he was coming up or didn't get when he was coming up from uh, from uncles and, you know, a uh, lack of a father or a bad father, all those things that uh, that make and shift his mindset that he thinks for the most part is right, that he thinks it's fair. You know, if it's a uh, if it's a woman that he's messing with, he's dating, that's one thing. He's, he's not going to marry her. You know, it's, it's just another woman. So to to understand those pathways is to understand which type of man you may be living with in real time at the moment. Uh, and those exercises that you talked about are, are tools within the book for you to, to do those exercises with him or just to do those exercises and understand what type of man you have at home potentially. And you need to understand, is this something that I want to continue with or not? And I know you spoke a little bit about the, uh, about the warning at the beginning of the book, like, like this, this is a warning. This is serious stuff. This is real stuff. You'll understand about your relationship, about yourself, and definitely about the man that you are with. You, you'll get that. Uh, we're not saying to do harm to the, the husband or the boyfriend that you're with. That's not the purpose of the book, but it can be upsetting. You know, I've gotten threats about this book, uh, lots of them. Uh, and it's just that powerful uh, of a read. And I get that. That was portion, that was part of it. I have daughters. So I want my daughters to to have healthy, strong relationships. And this book is a uh, this book is great for for women. Every woman should definitely read it. So, yeah, I, I thought it was uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And I think I think what you, the, the book actually is very compassionate too. I mean, you, yeah. you know, it, 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 it fits your personality because some books can be kind of snarky, right? It can be snarky, like <clears throat> it could be yeah. like. Uh, I, oh no, he didn't do that to you, girl. <laughs> hey, tell you what, you hey, you know what you need to do. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's none of that. It's 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 like look, you know, hey, I'm letting you know if you do this, there could be something around the corner. Right. If if the situation happens, you know, I, I just I don't I'll, I'll divulge this. Um, I look to authorities. It's it's for your for the protection for the growth of their marriage or right. their relationship. And I think it is so. And and for, and for guys, like, dude, what are you doing? It's like, <laughs> it's like yeah. Stop yeah. talking, Henry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's what I was getting uh, threats about. Uh, like, seriously, like, why? Oh, are yeah, you, I bet, I bet. Why are you exposing these things? Why are you saying these things? Why would you put a book out like that? And people that read it, it's like, you know, that that's true. But but why did you have to say it? You know, why did you have to put that that out there um, in the first place? But I, I think it's my responsibility to put it out there to talk about that that stuff it's important and if you're if you're if you're a man honestly man if you're a man out there and you're doing these tricky things and hiding these secrets and uh doing this stuff to women then you know that's your fault in the first place you know what i mean 
Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're judging by the guilt of their own conscience. Right. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. And that's like, almost like when Spike Lee came out with the movie called School Days back in the day, the black yeah. community got on, got on him for, for airing dirty laundry. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you know, the uh, the uh, jigaboos and the wannabes, right? Yeah. Um, but we all know it's true. Oh, he, yeah. she high yellow. Oh, no, nah, she she black. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it's like that's been going on for decades, man. For, it's a, probably hundreds of years, right? Ever since whatever. Um, right. Right. Since, uh, you, know, you know why? I won't, I won't go there. <laughs> um, the old slave, slave master thing going on there. Um, I get off subject here. But um, but let's get into a little bit of the uh, of, of the actual uh, IT pieces of it, internet, I'm sorry, internet information technology piece of it, dealing with security, because I've mentioned before that, you know, the whole thing with big tech and everything else, uh, what kind of research did you have to go through to kind of understand some of the nuances? You don't have to say exactly what they are in the book, but uh, to understand that, like, dude, you got into some serious stuff. You got some apps you mentioned, like, oh, you know that? And you know that too? Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. How much digging did you have to do to understand that? And do you feel that, um, that, that there's some skill set in there that we can learn even outside of relationships to keep to protect ourselves, not only from cheating, but also from just prying eyes from big from big um, from big brother. Uh, it's it's t- well. Let me say that uh, I I've always been a techie guy from from gaming to you know writing a little code whatever. Um, always been into just technology and all the trends and all that stuff. That's always been me. Uh, also. Um, in, in fairness and openness, I a lot of this book is a lot of the things that I've done to women, the, the hearts that I've broken, you know, and all the apologies I had to go back to women and actually deal with all that hurt and pain too. I the, the brokenness of some of these men or examples in this book are me. Like those were those were me. I was a part of that. So I had real time uh, experiences with that stuff. Now, as far as uh, the technology and all that, that's uh, Big Brother's always watching. I do a lot of research. I do a lot of reading, obviously, uh, a lot of research as far as uh, what's going on in our phones, uh, user agreements. Uh, I work with the public. I see all that stuff. I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree as well. So uh, a lot of research goes in on that end. uh, And I know that there's a lot going on as far as Big Brother, as far as us always being watched and captured. Uh, one thing that really kind of triggered me years back is when I was looking at a, a Zuckerberg interview and uh, this guy was on his laptop and he had he had his laptop camera taped off. I was like, <laughs> why is that? Like, why does he have his camera on his laptop taped off? And that kind of started the rabbit hole for me of, of learning some of this stuff. I saw another uh, big time NBA player uh, who had made a lot of money in the NBA who was walking around with a flip phone. I'm like, why? Why doesn't this guy have the news Android or, or iPhone and all that stuff? So I started to dive into that. And uh, once you get into the book, you'll see some of the apps and secrets and hidden things that men do. Uh, that hide that to hide stuff from their wives or from, from their girlfriends and all that. So one being able to get access into his phone is nearly impossible uh, for a certain reason. I, I don't want to give it away, but for a certain reason that that's nearly impossible, but should you even get past that particular firewall, then there's another one that you may not even know about still, but the book talks about all that stuff and how you can kind of find out uh, some of those things. So it's a, uh, it's good and it's powerful, man. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's incredible. So, um, yeah, yeah, I won't go there either. But um, <laughs> but it's a it's it's a very powerful book. I think it's, it's, it goes back to the thing that our secrets make us sick. And someone told me that a while back, that your secrets make you sick. And I that's think deep. that um, that there's some truth to that. Now, people can exploit those secrets if you tell it to the wrong person. Right. Um, would you agree with that as well? I mean, you, you can't tell anyone all your stuff, right? Right. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely not. That's why you got to have a, a inner core. That's what. Uh, that's what the marriage is supposed to be, right? Oh. Uh, if, if 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 you you should be able to go to your your husband and wow. tell him this is what I'm struggling with. This is the secret I've held. These are the things that I'm thinking about. You should be. That's the person that you should be able to go to. But instead, a lot of times we'll go to the outside. Uh, oh, yeah. and talk to our, our friends, our 
coworkers, you know, uh, some lady on the street, you know, with blue hair or whatever. We'll, we'll do those things because we're afraid to talk to the person that we're supposed to be closest to. Wow. That's where we go back to why uh, that singularity is so important in the uh, in the marriage. You're supposed to be able to share those things. And those things are then locked into the house. You deal with them in-house, you you handle them, you get past them and all that stuff. And then you're stronger all for it. So. In my Bible study class this morning, Sunday school class, uh, our, we're, we're learning about, uh, and I'm, by the way, I'd rather... Uh, study on the year tillage, but I know you're a busy man. Um, <laughs> no pressure there, Henry. <laughs> but we were talking about marriages, about basically not sharing, like to the like. If I, I have an argument with my wife, I don't go to my mom and say, "Hey, mom, you know, she didn't put the cap on the toothpaste. What's up with that?" Right. So, <laughs> so next time, next family reunion or you know Thanksgiving, she'd be like, she'd be like, I can't believe she wouldn't leave a cap on my my son's toothpaste. Right. Um, and so, but he didn't hit the, he didn't, I didn't make the connection or, or, or connect the dots like you just did saying that it should be within the confines of our family to work it out. Right. And he did say this, he did say to make sure if there's, if there's abuse or something going on there, no, no, we're not saying that we're talking about stuff that's within reason. We're not talking about, you know, right. if you're having, if you're being abused, obviously go seek help. But, right. um, he mentioned that as well, but I, I think you agree with that too, right, Henry? Yes. Yes. Big time. Oh, okay. So, um, Especially if you're, if you're a woman, as a woman, you ought to have at least two best friends, right? At least two best friends that uh, that if something were to happen or something got totally out of control, you could pack up everything and go there and be just off off grid for for a bit uh, to get to safety. Uh, as a woman, you definitely got to have those those at least two best friends that you can uh, that you can kind of depend on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm clear on that so the audience understands that. So, um, <laughs> so, so um, let's talk a little bit about um, Boys to Men. There's a, a band that came out back in the day when it was about yep. um, And I like the, the title of that, of that name, Boys to Men. Yep. Um, now, do you see what, – what's your thoughts of in terms of men? We talked about earlier about Barack Obama and you talked about Time Magazine. What is the importance really of, of not just black men, but obviously I think black men are disproportionately hurt by this, but all men. What's the importance of having strong male figures in the family structure? Uh, it, it's everything. It's, it's crucial. Uh, you've heard the old saying that a woman can't teach a boy to be a man and all that. There, there's, there's some truth to that. There's some, some things that as a man you have to wrestle with uh, throughout you know, uh, childhood. Uh, adolescence and all that stuff and getting into your uh, young adulthood, you have to be able to deal with uh, and having strong, uh, a strong father, uh, a strong male mentor, strong coaches, uh, strong male figures all around make all the difference. But those those guys in our day are now called toxic, <laughs> you know, the toxic yeah. masculinity. Those those guys are called narcissists. Those guys are, you know, called rude our our day because those guys are more so leaders. And the world that we're in doesn't, doesn't really want that in our day. The world that we live in now would rather have this little Nas X guy looking pregnant on his, on, on his Instagram or something like that. That is the that is the new picture of adult malehood all right that's where everything is being pushed towards uh, unfortunately so it's difficult to get a a man so when you when you see a man it, it causes all types of irritation in our public square uh nowadays um, but it's so crucial that a father is there to teach his son what to do if a tire pops um how do you handle a woman yelling at you you can't just go and hit this woman in the face if she's yelling at you. She's, she's not another man. That's not the way that you do that. Um, you can't just punch your wife uh, for whatever reason. You have to love your wife into submission. You can't you can't just aggressively just grab your wife and beat her into submission. That's that's not the way that it works. You love her into submission and you you, you love her into a different understanding if you're trying to get her to see things differently. But it's hard to get that if you've never been raised by a man you've never seen that balance and most of our most of our young men unfortunately i i can't give you the numbers but most of our men are being raised by a a woman then they go to school for eight nine hours a day with a woman and so their entire life is structured around the feedback and the behaviors of a woman and then 
the issue comes when these men in male strengthened bodies are trying to behave like women and it's it's causing all types of chaos and crime and brokenness uh within society so that's why it's so important we have to have men strong real men in our society so especially like you said uh, a little bit especially in the black community because the numbers are so disproportionate uh and it, it's crazy to even to even think about what's happening with our, our young black boys because they, they're always seen as a target too i get that and i see that as well uh, so it's it's highly important that we have that strong male leadership all around i used to coach basketball um aau basketball and i coached um soccer with my little my little son at one time he was like they're five yeah. four or five years old and these kids were running rough shot all over the place right and um you know whatever around the place whatever and so the i think i was at the time i was assistant coach and then uh, i basically said hey buddy stop it get in line all the kids stopped and got in line i was like oh wow because <laughs> <laughs> and one of the moms was like wow well that, that's impressive yeah, um yeah. and and their, and their time <laughs> and their time this is even worse I was in a basketball game with uh, AAU, actually, no city, whatever. <laughs> this kid was about six foot nine, could dunk. And I'm a coach, I'm, I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm probably in the mid thirties, whatever. He could, he could have squashed me like a bug. He's 17 years old, right? <laughs> but he was acting, he was acting, he was being a knucklehead. And I'm assistant coach in the bench. I'm, I'm the, I'm the good cop to my other coach's bad cop. And so finally, I just got, I just got pissed off, right? I'm yeah. sorry to use that language, guys, but I walked up there and I gave him, I said some things to him yeah. on the game, during the game. And I thought he was going to kill me. But to my shock, he's like, yes, sir. And he sat down and I was like, oh. <laughs> so, I, I just think that, that male figure, I just think they don't have that a lot of them. And so, um, so sorry you got a tangent. I had to say the story. That's my next funny. <laughs> I, he could have crushed, he could have squashed me like a bug, dude. Um, <laughs> remember that, you know, Chris Rock, and he said, um, there's a line with a little man you don't cross. If another man is another man, <laughs> <laughs> bigger than you are, there's a line that you won't cross. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, same question for a woman. Uh, what's the woman's role in this situation? Uh, mind you, being a, a being in under a tutelage of a halfway decent man. I'm not saying she was some knucklehead. I'm saying what, what's her role in a relationship in that way? How important is that? Equally as important. Uh, equally as important is just as important for her to to have a, a strong presence in uh, the child's life too, because all, all of that nourishment, all, all, of, all of that correctness and her gentleness, her, her wits um, in the Bible, wisdom is always of a, a, a female <laughs> thought, right? It's a female word or a feminine word when you're talking about wisdom. So, so our children need that balance of, strength and aggression from their father as well as the the gentleness and the nourishment of their mothers that is what brings the marriage together that's what makes it unique that's why the, the child can get the fullness of that right uh, and that is why again the enemy is trying to break that away either you get too much of the one or too much of the other but he didn't want you to get that full balance right. uh, the way that god had designed it to be from the beginning again yeah. predefining love predefining things the way that God had already uh, determined it to be. And she is crucial. And I know that, uh, like we talked about some of the media stuff, uh, and we talked a little bit about this in, in, the, uh, in the book, To Orgasm. We talked a little bit about it uh, for our women. The portrayal of a woman in our society has to be reconstructed, right? Because every time I turn on my television, it's, it's women seen in this particular light, right? Every time I go to social media, uh, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat, some woman is twerking everywhere for twerking for likes, twerking for comments, all of this type of stuff. And, and, and what it is, our women are looking for attention. They're looking for validation. Yeah. All that attention and that validation should be coming from her, her husband. Uh, but instead, she's in this cycle of trying to get it, trying to get it, trying to get it. And it's coming from various men all over the place that didn't have no interest in, in being with her or marrying her or anything like that. It's just, Hey, can you please just take it, take your top off or, you know, what? Yeah. Can, you, can you jiggle and shake a little bit more over here? Can you, can you do a bit, little bit of that? So uh, it's, it's our responsibility just as a society to say, that look, we don't want our women to be portrayed that way. We don't want you saying this about, we have to protect them. 
we have to protect them because if our women are not here, who's going to raise our children? Yeah. So the question then is this, if you look at our society, uh, who is raising our children? Because they, they these these women are, are so broken, so distraught, so gone, uh, and then they're working and doing the jobs too. Our children are just being raised and thrown out there by uh, whatever and whomever. And I think that's part of uh, one of Biden's uh, proposed plans was to, to get children to stay in school for an extra four years, I think it is. Uh, and then wow. he said, hey, we'll, we'll pay for it, <laughs> all to get them institutionalized, all to get them educated in, in their particular sense, in their particular mind. So all this stuff is dangerous if you look at it under the cover. Um, but our, our women are highly, highly important to the way that everything works, because you can't have one without the other, the woman without the man or the man without the woman. So the world is just trying to blend a man into a woman or a woman into a man. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. So. Yeah, I agree. And um, we've gone about 50 minutes now, and they're going to take a few more questions. I'll get you out of here in about an hour, unless you would go longer. But um, I thank you for the aspects for the women, because I, that you put it in a way that I had never really heard, um, because yeah. um, that's important. I mean, like you said, the validation piece of it, you know, that women are being objectified, but they're accepting that objectivity. And uh, it's, it's kind of strange how <laughs> it's weird. If you open a good door for a woman, all of a sudden you're being a, a, sh a chauvinist. But if you, you know, I mean, saying it's like reversed. But if you, but if you don't do it, then you're being, you know, what I mean, so I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a, it's an ugly line. <laughs> or, or it's like I, I've got, I got a better example. Like the woman at the club, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You go to the clubs, you know, probably oh, yeah. you're, you're single, or whatever, and she's wearing a certain thing, you know, picture, picture, or whatever, and then you go, like, wow. Why you can't be looking at me like that? Uh, are you kidding me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how you left your house? Right. And why right. am I the bad guy here? You know, what I mean, right. Uh, and, and you do talk about in the book. You do you know, again. You don't have to spoil anything, but you do talk about how how we're designed, how men are designed to be visual, and, and we're made a certain way. We respond yes. certain ways. Doesn't doesn't make us, doesn't make us guiltless. You know, it right. doesn't make us. But uh, um, you know, we're responsible for our actions. But Absolutely. we see something, bam! It's like that, man. Um, yeah. And after that, we're responsible beyond that. But still, I mean, you're just right. asking for trouble. Would you agree with that? I, uh, I was talking to a, a young lady the other day. We were going back and forth. She got highly upset with me. Uh, that wasn't the purpose. But we were talking about uh, uh, one of the ladies asked me, hey, would you let your, your wife wear these booty shorts out in public? <laughs> I said, absolutely not. My wife, my wife will not wear booty shorts out in public. I won't allow it. And uh, you know, the lady got really upset with how can you tell her what to wear out in public, blah, 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 on and on and on. Um, she's a woman. Uh, you know, what makes you think that you uh, can dictate what she's wearing? You know, you're being controlling. It's like I'm not being controlling. I'm being protective. You need to understand the balance of it. You know, uh, she's like, well, you know, I can go out and just do what I want and wear what I want and everything is okay. I was like, I, I wish that we lived in a world and a society <laughs> that that was true, right. but that's not the society that we live in. That's not the world that we live in. Uh, there, there's some serious issues out there. There's some dangerous people out there. When you, if you, if you want to be out half naked and gyrating and jiggling and all that stuff, I wish that the world would just say, oh, well, that's so nice and just be on your merry way. But that's not the world that we live in. Uh, trafficking is a real deal. Uh, wow. Rape is a real deal. All that stuff, man. And uh, like you said, we certainly can't blame our, our women for that uh, in any way. Uh, but we definitely have to be cognizant of of what's happening at the same time. So it, it's important, man. It's important. Yeah. Wow. Let's cut from a question for you, man. Um, I, yeah. I talked about I talked about um, the man, the woman. What's the child's responsibility in a relationship? <clears throat> now, I'm, a, I'm not expecting any kids to be watching this, but um, if you're raising kids, whatever, what would what would parents expect for their kids to be in terms of the role of this cohesive family unit? Uh, in in a, in a simple way of putting that is uh, an extension of them. Your your children should be an extension of what they see at home, what they get at home, uh, how they feel at home. So. Uh, Yelling kids come from yelling homes. You know, bad kids come from bad homes. Respectable kids come from respectable homes. Uh, so your children, uh, it's it's up to us as parents to definitely steer and train them and teach them in the right ways. Uh, and then at the same time, be be smart enough to give them room to make decisions and failures on their own so that they can learn from from things, too, as well. 
Um, but that that would be the core as far as children, obviously, before, uh, you know, teenage years and stuff like that to, to really have them in that particular space, get get some of this technology away from them. Um, so early, you know, make sure that they they have great habits as far as, as reading and studying and all those things. Make sure they ask questions. Make sure they, they go on adventures. Uh, make sure take them places. Uh, and it's also our responsibility to make sure that they understand uh, that the world can be uh, in a different way than it currently is, too, because we don't know. Right. This is our generation. This is our time. It's it looks like this now. But who knows? The generation that's coming after us could be a lot smarter, a lot better, you know, and say, you know what? I don't hate this person because of their skin or, I, you know, I don't want to shoot this guy because, you know, he stepped on my pair of my Air Jordans or what right. have you. You know, right. so it's, it's our responsibility to give them that. And I think kids respond well for the most part. That's awesome, Henry, because I read actually that the millennial generation, which we're at right now, behind that is uh, Generation Z. I'm hearing that they are actually right now the most conservative generation in decades, that they're rejecting the philosophy of this counterculture, um, dealing with like, I'm sorry, cancel culture uh, thing going on here, that they just want to be good people and do the right thing. The problem with them is, or the, 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 the challenge for them is getting them before they get out into indoctrination mode, into like high school mm -hmm. and so forth, catching them early enough that they can they can do that. And I got this from Kylie Eitz, who was a, a guest on here before you mentioned okay. it. All right, cool, cool. So thank you for that. And um, and I wanted to say, first of all, my conservative take on this whole interview is obvious, is is that if you are a conservative and you want to make this country better, or if you're just a, a, a good person, you want to just live a happy life, unfortunately, <laughs> you're going to have to take philosophies like me and Henry. You're going to have to take a pick a side, okay? And to right. do so, you're going to have to have a strong family. And to do that, if you're married, you're going to have to have a strong marriage. So there's no point in, in, in listening to all of, you know, um, Jordan Peterson or reading all the books on Ben Shapiro or all this stuff, and your marriage is falling apart and you're, and you're getting divorced. That doesn't do us any good. We need strong families, strong children that are being raised to have it so that we can actually make this a difference either from a secular standpoint or from a, more importantly, spiritual standpoint, however you want to um, take that. Right. Personally, I, I'm a Bible guy. I believe the Bible. <laughs> so, right. but that's my take on it. Um, but so Henry, for you, I'm going to give you kind of the last word here, but I'm going to ask you a question prior right. to its ending. So uh, the question I'm going to ask before I uh, give you the last word is this, if you could take uh, one thing and make it happen, like uh, John Luke Picard on Star Trek, make it so number one. <laughs> and the whole world just uh, falls in line, what would it do? What would you do? Uh, wow. Uh, if, if, I could, uh, <clears throat> if I could take one thing, I would be uh, more prone to just get everybody to understand what love is uh, closer to the side of uh, the Greeks, how the Greeks uh, understood love. Uh, you know, you got agape, phileo, storge, different types of words to use for love. Uh, we just say love and it's supposed to encompass everything. With, you know, that's inaccurate. But I would get everybody to understand that there's a difference between love as in I want to have sex with you, love. Uh, love as in I love my parents or my children. Love as in this agape type of love from, from God that is not depending on the other person. I love you because I can't not love you. So I would I would give the world a better understanding of the word love, and um, but then let them decide from there uh, what what to do with it. And I, I would let it let it play out that way. If if I could do anything, if I had that kind of magical power, I would probably do it that way. And if people understood that, so when when you're out in public and some lady <laughs> just comes up and say, "Hey, Kyle, I love you." But, you know, it'll be interpreted, hey, Kyle, I want to have sex with you. Then, you know, you're like, hey, well, you don't love me as in want to be in fellowship or, you know, related to me or anything like that. You just you just want my goods. You know, and I understand that. And I think if everybody had that, then we'd be more uh, we'd be more transparent as far as our communication and our desires and what we want. So, yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's really cool, man. That's a great answer. And uh, it's interesting. Last night, I'm working on a, to let you know, let everybody know, just for the first time. Yeah. And I'm working on the 100, the top 100 Christmas movies of all time 
regardless of genre outside of horror, no horror Christmas, but the top 100 movies, it's going to come out sometime in October. I'm going to work that hard. And um, so I'm watching, I'm watching Love Actually, which I've already seen, but I'm critiquing it. The first five minutes of it talks about the different types of love, okay? And um, being at Heathrow Airport and watching people um, come in, um, kids meeting daughters, um, fathers meeting um, sons, um, women meeting, uh, no, husbands meeting uh, girlfriends. I mean, <laughs> husbands meeting wives. <laughs> Probably, right? I don't know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Based on this discussion, it could be anything. After reading your book, yeah, probably so. Um, <laughs> but it, it just it struck me as you said that that uh, that's that, that even Hollywood knows that's you know yeah. a thing. Well, at least they did. I don't know about anymore. It's an old movie. Um, yeah. But I'm digressing. But uh, anyway, look forward for that, vi- that video coming out soon. Um, well, I have, so, I have a vote. I have a vote. If you're going to be doing the 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 best, the top, sure. as far as uh, 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 holiday movies, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer was my favorite coming up. The the old one, the old yes. one, Rudolph mm-hmm. the Red Nosed Reindeer was one of my favorites. So if, if you're doing a voting system, I vote for that right there. It's a classic. It's definitely top twenty. Hey, they they they, they did him dirty, man. Yeah. <laughs> Them dirty man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even, even even Santa Claus clowned them. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Like, no, that knows. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and you wonder why the guy ran off. All right, <laughs> right. God, that was so bad. But you know, but you know, you know, stood by him. Who stood by him? The, uh, what was it? The uh... the dough. What was it? Well, there's three of them. The, the girl was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you have the little... Uh, the little elf guy, right? The Dennis? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I got all, you. I got they, you. But they all laughed at him eventually, though. That's kind of bad, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so, anyway. Um, so, is there anything else? You uh, well, Let me say this. Is there any way... Well, you mentioned before. Uh, yeah. Is there any way they can get... A, a, my audience can get a hold of you, get contact you, get your book. Um, how can they reach you, Henry? In your way, oh, in yeah, your yeah. ministry, well, in your I'm, in your, I'm in your active business. on uh, I'm active on social media. I dot am dot king dot Henry. Uh, that's on my TikTok and my Instagram. Uh, so that will be there. You can you can follow. You can interact. Uh, I'm pretty good about just talking with uh, people that are on there too. Uh, of course, our website myrelationshipthing.com. Uh, you can go there. You can order the book from there as well. Again, the book is Orgasm, O-R-G-A-S-H-I-M. That's on there as well. And that website will have all the information that you need. If you're trying to get in uh, contact with us as far as coaching and counseling, the services that we provide, as well as ordering the book, all that stuff, everything that you need is going to be right there on the website. Yeah. And this is your second book, correct? This is my second book. Uh, the first book is uh, still on uh, iBooks and on Amazon as well. Five Reasons Good Men Don't See You is the name of that particular book. And you can get that one as well. Same thing. If you go through the website, it'll, it'll link you right to that as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So which, which way do they get the most margin? Is it going through your website directly or does it matter? Uh, no, no, it won't. It won't matter. Uh, okay. Well, if you if you obviously if you do the digital version of it, then, you know, I'll get more for it because they don't have to print it and all that stuff. That's so. right. I did the digital version. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did the Kindle. So yeah. awesome, man. Great. So um, so uh, that being said, is there uh, anything else that you want to say to the audience before we uh, let you go? Anything you want to uh, convey? Uh, yeah, man. Well, one, thanks for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Uh, sharing the book and having a great conversation as we always do. Like I said, we know each other, so we always have a great conversation. Uh, only other thing I would say, man, is trust in uh, marriage, trust in relationships. There's, there's nothing wrong with marriage. It's the participants. That's the issue. (laughs) So, uh, trust in it, trust in the process. There's, there's a lot to learn, uh, but believe in it, even in this particular day. So, yeah. Fantastic. You heard that from Mr. Henry Doss and much love out to your family, Victoria and your kids and so forth. And uh, God bless you. You guys are uh, a wonderful ministry. Uh, every time I have a chance to be around you, it's, it's an honor to be there in your presence. Thank you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not being I'm not being funny here. The guys, he's 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 holding back on you guys. He's 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 really, really phenomenal when he knows his, his ability to speak and communicate and his uh, ability to give forth a message. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what's got got that going for you uh, in the near future. 
Awesome. Thank you. So you're welcome. Absolutely. So with that, this is the conservative take, and this is the interview with Henry Doss. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like what we do on this channel, we take pop culture and politics and family values and filter to your right. then please click the like and subscribe button. And as always, there's some videos that you may want to check out right here. <laughs>